So we've seen what needs to be done to get our licensing system off the ground, and now it's time to execute. In this video, we're going to be configuring our product in Lemon Squeezy and updating our app to validate licenses. We'll also be tweaking our core functionality to demonstrate how software activation can be used to unlock additional features. To kick things off, we'll start off by creating a free Lemon Squeezy account. Click the link in the description to visit the sign up page and create a new account using whichever method you prefer. Once you've verified your email address, go to general settings and add your store name, subdomain, country, currency, and contact email. The subdomain you choose here won't matter too much as we plan on integrating a checkout overlay into the website we'll be launching later in this series. We can now save our changes and move on to activating our store. Here you'll need to enter your legal name and business or home address as well as provide a brief overview of yourself and how your app creates value for customers. Keep in mind that this process is manually reviewed by a human as all approved stores need to comply with the Lemon Squeezy terms of service. So be transparent and provide sufficient information. It may also be worth holding off on activation and using test mode until you finish building a website which we'll be doing later in the series, as providing additional evidence such as a website and social media links can greatly support you in the approval process. With test mode activated, we'll proceed through the remainder of the setup process manually to avoid issues with grayed out buttons on the setup page. The changes we make can be later migrated into your live account instance once it's activated. Skipping product creation for a moment, we'll look at discounts. In this series, we don't plan on adding any discount codes, but if you do want to add one, you can configure it under the discount section in the store menu. Next, we'll update our preferred payout method and add in any additional information required for tax purposes, such as a business name, address, VAT or ABN number, and so on. Afterwards, we're going to move into the design section and disable our store since we're going to be using our own website as our primary storefront. We'll then add a custom redirect which points to our website and publish our changes. Now we can move on to the part we've all been waiting for, creating our product. In the product section of the store menu, click create product and start by entering a name and description for your product. The description should mention the primary benefit of purchasing a license, so it's clear what customers will receive in exchange for their hard-earned dollars. Next, you can update the pricing model for your software to be a one-off payment, a subscription, a lead generator which collects information such as email addresses in exchange for a free download, or a variable price which customers can adjust. The pricing model we're going to be using in this series is a freemium model, where the base version of the application provides access to reduced functionality at no cost and allows for upgrades in the future if the user decides that the product produces enough value to justify its cost. So to implement this, we'll stick with a single payment and set our price to $1. Since we're making a software product, we can add screenshots and other promotional images to the media section if we want to, and we'll leave the file section empty as our files will be hosted on our website. We'll also leave the variant section blank as we don't have multiple product tiers, subscription length promos, or volume discounts. In the settings section, we'll switch on generate license keys where we can adjust our licensing parameters as required. In this series, we're going to allow users to purchase licenses which are valid for one year, which can only be activated on five different devices simultaneously. If you set both of these values to unlimited, it would mean that users have perpetual access to your software and can install it on an unlimited number of devices, which may be problematic if you want to prevent the sharing of license keys online. To finish off, we'll update the purchase redirect to a thank you page which we'll be building later, remove the product from our storefront since we aren't using the Lemon Squeezy store page, and update the email download button to use the same redirect. We can now publish our product, and if you open up the right side drop down, you'll find an option to copy our test mode product into live mode, as well as the share and preview options. If we open up share, you'll find a full page checkout preview which can be configured to your liking and used in promotional materials via the provided link. If we then move over to checkout overlay, we'll see the overlay which we'll be integrating into our website for a seamless checkout experience. If we go back to the product page and then open the preview option, we'll find a functional test mode checkout form which we'll now use to simulate a purchase so we can test our licensing process out. Make sure that the test mode banner is at the top of the page before you proceed, and if it isn't, make sure that the test mode switch is on at the bottom left of the Lemon Squeezy dashboard. If we take a look at the Lemon Squeezy test mode docs, we'll find information on how to test the checkout process as well as different test card numbers we can use. Using this information, we'll fill out the checkout and proceed with test payment. Note that no monetary transaction will actually take place and you will not be billed for this test order. As expected, we will redirect it to our thank you page, which doesn't yet exist, so everything is working as expected. If we return to Lemon Squeezy, we can use the orders page to refund orders, resend receipts, and issue invoices which customers may require for tax purposes. In the licenses section, we'll find the license for the test order which we just processed, and if we click on it, we'll find more information as well as various options for managing the key. With our product configured, we can now refer to the license API docs to see how we can implement license management in our program using calls to REST API endpoints. If we scroll down, we'll find all the critical information necessary to make API requests, and if you scroll a little bit more, 
you'll find the required call parameters. Hopping over to VS Code, we're first going to add an additional dependency so we can post API requests. Navigate to the requirements.txt file and add an additional line with request version 2.31.0. Then open a terminal and run pip env install r requirements.txt to install requests into our virtual environment. Next, we're going to add some config variables which are going to be used for license storage and parsing. First, import the modules shown and create the app data directory and license path variables. These variables provide platform independent paths to an app data directory and the file which will contain our application's license respectively. Next, add Add the motherboard's UUID, instance name, and Fernet key variables, which will be used to apply symmetric encryption to our license data so that it isn't stored in plain text. This example uses the motherboard ID of the current computer to encrypt license information. Using the last segment of the UUID as a license instance number and the last 32 bytes as a cryptographic key. With our licensing variables configured, we'll now update our core split function to only support PDF documents up to 5 pages long by default. Add in the activated parameter, add a period to the runtime error message for opening a PDF, and add a simple check to our file length criteria and activation status. To quickly test whether this is working, switch into split.py and add false to the split PDF call. If we now run our app and try to split a PDF which has 5 pages, it'll work as expected. However, if we try a document with 6 pages, we'll see an alert message pops up. Great! With our core split function working, we can now enter our app.py file and import the modules we'll need to activate, validate, and deactivate licenses. We'll also add in the variables we'll need to track the current activation status, the name of the product when we perform license checks, and an ID tracker for regularly scheduled license validation checks. With these added, we'll also update our window title to use our product name and add a call to the license validation function we'll be implementing shortly. Next, scroll down below the init function and start defining the activate license function. We start off by performing some basic license checks before forming a request which will be posted to the lemon squeezy activate endpoint. We then convert the response to a dictionary and check if the license was successfully activated, indicating that it is valid and allocating a license seat to the current machine. If this check is successful, we ensure that the app data directory from config.py exists and that it is not occupied by a directory with the same name as our license file. We then open a license file in WB mode and write in our license key and instance ID. With our license now saved, we can start our license validation loop, skipping the first validation call as we've just activated the license, and then update our return and activation state variables. If the license was not activated during the post request, raise a runtime error which is then captured by our accept block that sets our activation status to false and removes the license key if found. Finally, we can update our Windows top bar and return whether activation was successful or not. Next, we'll implement deactivate license which can be used to deregister a license seat which is currently active. Inside this function, we start off by checking if our license file exists, before decrypting it and loading the information inside into a dictionary which we'll be posting to the lemon squeezy deactivate endpoint. Based on the response, we then verify whether the license has been deactivated, update our app's activation state, and notify the user. If deactivation fails, we raise a runtime error which our accept block processes to set the app's activation status to false and notify the user accordingly. Finally, we stop the validation loop if it's running, delete our license file, and update the app's top bar before returning whether the deactivation was successful. Following activate and deactivate, we'll now implement validate license. The first half of this function is very similar to deactivate license, but the request is posted to the lemon squeezy validate endpoint instead. Once a response is received, we verify whether the license is valid and matches our instance ID and product name. If the license check fails at any point, a runtime error should be raised which sets the app activation status to false, cancels periodic license checks, and then deletes the license file. We then end by updating the app's top bar and returning whether the validation was successful. We'll now also want to implement our periodic validation loop, which first checks for an existing background loop, performs a validation check which can be skipped if required, and then schedules another check in 10 minutes. Lastly, we'll define our update top bar function, so our app window and menu updates together with our license changes. If the app is activated, the window title is set to Pro, the Activate menu option is disabled, and a new option is added for deactivation. If it isn't, the window title is set to Light, and the menu is reverted to Show Activate only. We can now start linking these functions into our GUI. First return to split.py and update the third argument in our split PDF call to self.app.activated. Next, switch into activate.py and import the theme manager and app module. Next, increase the width of the activate window to 580, store the app instance in a variable, and create an ID tracker for scheduled tasks which we'll be using to adjust button colors. 
We'll then update our activate button to call the activate function, which we'll be defining below. Activate should first cancel any scheduled button color changes and then update the activate button text and color with our desired appearance while the activation request is still being processed. A call is then made to activate license with the entry text passed as the key argument. Once a result is returned, if activation was successful, we update the button to green, change the text to a success message, and modify the command to close the activation window. Conversely, if activation was unsuccessful, the button is changed to red with a fail message, and a task is scheduled to revert this button back to its initial state. We're now ready to test our app. If you run the main app.py task, pick a PDF with six pages and output to the same directory. Initially, the split will fail. If we then open up the activate window and try activating with a valid key from Lemon Squeezy, which we can retrieve either from our purchase email or the Lemon Squeezy dashboard, the activation should be successful, and clicking the button should close the activation window. As you can see, the window title has been updated, and if we try to split the six page document again, it should be successful. During testing, if you want to locate the license file, first navigate to the app data directory for your operating system. On Windows, you can do this by holding the Windows key and pressing R, and then entering percent app data percent. Inside this folder, you should find a directory named Terra PDF, and if you open it up, you'll find the license file. And that's it. You now have a functional app linked to a licensing backend that you can now sell online. If you enjoyed the video, click subscribe. And if you're ready to start setting up the VPS that'll host the website for your application, watch this video. Until next time.